We'll go ahead and get started. I'm Bob Sandheinrich. Um, this is Bernard Espigule. Uh, so we're going to be doing a, a workshop demonstration of DataDrop. And uh, specifically, Bernard's going to be showing how we can use it with if this, then that. Um, so DataDrop is uh, Wolfram's uh, cloud-based data aggregator service. Uh, it's uh, been, um, uh, we, we've been out for almost a year now with it live. Um, and, uh, and it, you know, there's been a lot of people using it. Uh, if you saw Evan over there give a, give a nice talk yesterday for a, a nice application of DataDrop with uh, political data and social media. Um, that was, it was pretty interesting. Um, there are a couple other people, I think, that are using DataDrop as small parts of their talks. Um, so so it's, it's starting to work its way into, into this community and sort of the Wolfram world. Um, so uh, for those of you who might not be so familiar, I'm going to do a quick overview of what DataDrop is. Um, then I'm going to show you how you can get started using DataDrop, show you the, the web interface. Um, the, so we have a DataDrop website, and then show you how you can use DataDrop from uh, within the Wolfram language, whether that's Mathematica or the cloud or Wolfram desktop. Um, and then I'm going to do a couple of uh, quick examples before I hand off to Bernat. Um, so for the, first, for the first few minutes, there's not going to be uh, a, a couple, you know, I'm just going to be talking. Um, but then you can feel free to try to follow along when I'm on the website. Um, when I get into the language, I sort of have some the input cells already written out, so I wouldn't try necessarily try to follow along, just sort of uh, watch. Um, and then Bernard's examples might be easier if you want to try to do things along with us. Um, so like I said, the da data drop is a, uh, a service for, for aggregating data, um, but it doesn't just aggregate data. It also uh, standardizes it and gets it into uh, WDF. Um, so, so you know, you can get all of your entities as entities. You can get dates as dates. You can get uh, geolocations as Wolfram geolocations. Um, you can get quantities as physical quantity objects. You know, it standardizes it into the format that allows you to do all of our great uh, analysis with it. Um, and we've s tried to set up data drops so that anything can send us data. Um, so you can have a, anything with an HTTP connection can make a request to our API and add data to a data bin. Um, you can do it uh, from a web form, which we make it super easy to deploy a web form, um, which you can use directly or you can embed in your site. Um, you can do it from the language. There's lots of ways. You can tweet us data. You can send us data in email. Uh, you can use IFT, which Bernard's going to show, which is a super cool way to you know, add by a factor of 10 the number of things that can add data to data drop. Um, uh, a couple things to make note of. This is, uh, it, it, this is a service that lives in the Wolfram cloud. Um, essentially, anybody with a cloud account could make their own data drop. This is, this is not something that we have special abilities to do. This is a service written mostly in the Wolfram language, living in our cloud, that we thought would be a great service, so we, we made it. Um, and it's also integrated fully into the language, so we're, we'll see that in a minute. Um, so the, the, the fundamental unit of data drop is the data bin. Uh, this is e any person can have multiple data bins, and a data bin can have multiple users. Um, they're defined by unique IDs. Uh, they have both a long UUID and a short ID. Um, you can set permissions on your data bins, um, and you can define semantics for interpretation, which I definitely encourage people to do. Uh, it what it's what makes us special, I think, uh, as far as uh, places to send data. Um, so as I said, you can add data from lots of different sources, um, forums, Twitter, web forums. I guess I've already gone over this. Um, so uh, just a, a, a quick example. Here's a, a data bin I have, and I'll sh show you in a minute uh, exactly what this ugly, stupid data is and how it was made. Um, so once you have a data bin, um, you can use that data bin in the language just as, as a normal object. So date list plot, uh, which is a function probably most of you are familiar with, uh, you know, it, it can work with lists, um, but it can also work directly on a data bin, um, which is 
always time series data. So since it's time series data, things that work with time series objects generally work with data bins. Um, so that means you can access it from all these, uh, all of our, our, serve, our systems, Mathematica, Programming Cloud. And we also have Wolfram Alpha summaries, which I, I will also show in a minute. Um, so the first interface I'm going to show is the, the Data Drop website. So, uh, yeah, you guys can see that pretty well, right? Um, so, so this is the home page. It has uh, some, some blurbs about what we can do telling you how great data drop is. Um, there's, there's also this quick reference, which I encourage, if you're interested in data drop, I highly encourage you to look at this. Uh, I'm not going to go through it. We don't have nearly enough time. But this is sort of a, the main documentation for using data drop. Um, so uh, you can see I'm logged in here. Um, and I can create a data bin easily just, just by pressing the create a new data bin button. Um, and this will give me a new data bin. You can see I have this ID here. Um, that's the short ID. And up in the URL, you can see the, the full ID for the bin. Um, we, you can do anything you want. Uh, you can name it. Um, you can set permissions on the data bin. I'm not going to mess with it right now, because if, if somebody wants to frantically copy this ID into their session, they can, they can add they feel free to add data to this bin um, as we go along. You can add add entries to the data bin. Um, so this is using the standard Wolfram form function. It's just embedding it in an iframe on this website. I can add an entry. I can add another entry if I want. Um, so, so now we've created a data bin, and I'm going to take this ID. I'm just going to copy it. Um, so uh, let's see. Should we look? This isn't going to be a particularly interesting data bin to look at in Wolfram Alpha, but from there you can you can you can view data in your data bin in Wolfram Alpha. Um, and this was just a couple of text entries, which won't be very interesting. Um, Oh, uh, what happened here? Uh oh. Well, something, something, something failed there. Um, I'm, okay, we'll have to fix that. Um, so, so once you have this this bin ID, you can use this data bin from anywhere. Oops, that's the wrong one. Um, what am I doing? Um, so, so I can take that bin ID and put it right into the Wolfram language um, and access that same data bin. I can see, see the entries I've made. I can add new entries. Um, so so once, once you have a data bin, any, any interface with the Wolfram language can access it um, and use it um, from multiple places. So, so I said that, that uh, data bin with the stupid data that I had earlier um, is I was going to show you how I made it. So, so basically, I just created this data bin as I was creating this notebook. Um, I evaluated this, this set options cell, which basically says any time I, I hit a, a digit key on my keyboard while I was making this notebook, it, it added that value to a data bin. Um, so so you, know, you can create data bins for lots of little tracking things that you want to do. Um, so th I, this is you know something something simple that just sort of happens as I as I go along, um, and we can we can look at sort of the metadata of this data bin um, using options. Yeah. So as long if I'm in this notebook, in notebook yeah. So so you see, I'm setting the options of evaluation notebook. So any anything I do in this notebook until I quit the kernel or change that option, um, it it will it will do that. Um, so. Um, yeah, so if I click into a different notebook or into a browser or something, that won't work anymore. Um, so if we look at the options, it sort of shows the metadata. And I created this interpreter, which is the data, uh, data semantics that I've been looking, that I was mentioned earlier. So this is expecting integers. Um, but th this interpretation can be much more uh, uh, interesting things, which we'll so show in a second. So 
Um, now that I, I have the data from that data bin, you know, like I said earlier, all of the functions that work on time series or work on lists of data um, will pretty much work directly on the data bin itself. Um, so each time I do one of these things, it's going out and uh, checking if there's any, been any new data added to the data bin um, on the cloud. And if not, and it, since I'm not adding new data, um, it's, it's sort of showing the same thing. Um, I can also, as I mentioned earlier, oh, I'm, am I not authenticated? So some things require, so this, this data bin, I think I made uh, it uh, private for adding data. Anybody can read data from it, but only I'm allowed to write to it. So since I wasn't cloud connected, um, it wasn't going to let me create a web form for adding data. Um, but now that I'm authenticated, I can create a web form. Um, so this is, this is a, uh, a web form in our cloud. I can use this right here. Um, I could embed it in, what, in my own website. Um, and, and so now you should see we should have a 32 on the end of this thing. There we go. Um, all right, so that's sort of just sort of uh, super basic examples. Um, now we're going to show one with a little bit more uh, interesting interpretation. So I'm going to create a data bin that's looking for uh, four values. And you'll have to bear with me. This is a, this, I created this example for when I was giving a similar presentation, which was uh, online, and I could send people a link. Um, so either we, we can just use the data from that one, or if anybody wants to try to copy the, the, the ID into their notebook, we can do that. Um, but if I define these fields, so I'm looking for a quantity in years, I'm looking for a country, I'm looking for an animal, and I'm looking for a number. So I can create a, a data bin that's looking for those values. And uh, when I deploy the web form, do that update. Yeah, there we go. So, so, this is, so this is our smart forms. So I can fill it out. Uh, Favorite animal, uh, let's say a lion, how about uh, eight years. All right, so, so uh, the idea here is I can take this web form and let you all see it. Let's, well, we can do URL shorten, and it might not be as crazy. Um, so if anybody wants to tell me where they're from and their favorite animal, they can, they can use this, this short URL, and then they'll be able to uh, add data. Um, but in the interest of expediency, and I don't think we'll get more than a handful, we'll use the, we'll use the, the bin from uh, a previous example, from when I did this before. Um, let's see. Where is that one? We'll copy this bin. Um, this one has 110 results in it, so it'll be more interesting. Um, so you can see so when, when I gave this online, we had, uh, we had more diverse countries, although uh, we're pretty diverse here, so maybe Um, so, so once I have the data in my session, in, in, you know, once I've brought it in from the data bin, um, you know, I have all of the wonderful uh, tools in the language for working with uh, you know, geolocations and doing all sorts of neat stuff. So I can find all the capitals. I can plot paths from, uh oh, I have a typo there. I can plot the, the geopaths from where we are to uh, where all these, all these capitals are for everybody that attended the talk previously. We'll pretend like it's you guys. Um, and so, so when I looked at this before, I asked for val the values of the data bin. So that sort of sorts them all. Uh, and each, each uh, field is sort of sorted as a list. I can also ask for the entries 
And that'll be sort of like the transpose of that, where each uh, it's a list of each entry. Um, so when I look at it this way, it's easier to sort of draw correlations between different fields. Um, so if I just m get one person from each country, I can do a, a neat little, this, this one takes a minute, or I can pull in uh, a favorite animal from each country and plot it on the map, which is sort of trivial, but I, I don't know of any other systems that can really do that so quickly and easily. Let's see, are we still running? Or we'll come back. Um, and a little more interesting, we can create a data set, set from the data bin. Um, and uh, you know, we've probably seen a lot of data sets and talks already. Uh, this is a ver version 10 or 10.1 edition, I think. Um, but it allows you to, oh, there's my geographics. Let's make that bigger. It's more interesting. All right. All right, so some of the images get distorted, but there's the idea. Um, so, you, so more useful is creating a data set from the data bin. So when I create a data set, it gives me all the data along with the timestamps in the data bin. Um, and you can query, query this data in the language. I can look up all the people who filled out the form that are older than, than Wolfram Research um, using this date difference and select. So this is select acting as an operator, um, which is something that I think was new in 10.1 also. Uh, and um, once I have that result, I guess this is slow to looking up our founding date. The rest of it should probably be pretty fast. Well, we'll go ahead and evaluate those. Um, so once I've done that, I can I can uh, you know, get an image of the favorite animal of each of the people that's older than Wolfram Research because that's what everybody was wondering. wondering. Um, so, so this is just sort of a, there's our, there's our people older than Wolfram. Um, so yeah, so that's a basic demo of how to get started with DataDrop, how to create data bins, how to use a web interface, how to uh, take a data bin from the web interface, bring it into the language, access it in the language, um, and shows how you can seamlessly uh, get, the, get the data that you put in your data bin and start doing analysis and computation. Um, so I'm going to let Bernat take over here. Thank you, Bob, for, for this nice introduction to the data drop. So my name is Bernat Spigule, and today I'm going to talk about the uh, the if this then that uh, service, it's an external service that well, from now it provides a channel where you can connect to the different channels that are available to this platform. But uh, so the, um, I'm going to talk about the, this, uh, this platform and this uh, particular channel, the well, from data drop in the if this then that. And then I'm going to go through the different types of uh, recipes that you can create. The, these are do recipes and if recipes. And then I'm, I'm going to show two examples that you can use uh, data drop with other devices, for example, Arduino on the Raspberry Pi. And then I'm going to just go through the function semantic import and data bin upload. It's uh, some advanced, advanced functions that you can use to get uh, your local data from your desktop or whatever you, you have it and send it to the cloud so from data drop. Let me enlarge this. So uh, if this then that is a, is a, is an external platform, I encourage you to to download these uh, free apps that they have. Uh, these are the, the the do button, the do camera, and the do note, and then you have also the if uh, app. But and I'm gonna explain how, how to use that uh, using the the Wolfram data drop channel. There are like hundreds of different channels in there. So uh, I could just give you an overview of what's available. So it really increases the exponentially the, the different sources that you can get for, for data drop. 
and you can get really creative about what, what you want to connect with. So that there is like connected home, different services. I'm going to go through this one uh, later uh, as an example, but in that mobile data station. But you have a Fitbit. Uh, we, we already, we can see here some services that are, we are, are already integrated to the Wolfram language. But uh, it's, as you're going to see, it's, it's, uh, it opens more possibilities to have the Wolfram data drop uh, um, channel in this, uh, in this uh, kind of uh, galaxy of different apps and services. So I, I encourage you to download the apps and, and log in, sign up to, to this service. So you're going to be able to connect your Wolfram Data Drop account to if this and that and create uh, your own recipes. So uh, the, the two recipes uh, are single buttons so that it's going to be available in, in your, in your uh, smartphone or mobile device. So it's just one, with one, one tab, you are going to send data to your data drop, uh, a specific data bin that you have. And then you have the if recipes that are composed by a trigger, and then there is an action. And the action is going to be, in this case, uh, to save the data to a um, to, to data bin. Yeah. So let's look at the do apps. Uh, the, the, for example, uh, the, the do button app, an example that I have here, is, uh, well, first of all, you, you must create a, a data bin. Well, let, let me start with, with uh, the if this then that. So I'm just going to go to if this then that, the service. Oh, it's not it's connected. So I go to my recipes. And here in, in my recipes, you have the if recipes and the do recipes. The do recipes, it's better to, crea to, to create them when you are in your mobile device. So you open the, the app and you can create uh, your own recipes. But for the if recipes, uh, it's better. I find it uh, more useful to, to, to open them and create them through the, the, the web uh, platform, the offer. So you select the trigger channel. In this case, I'm going to select Instagram. And then you have to specify the type of trigger that you want. In this case, I'm going to choose this one. So whenever um, a photo is sent to Instagram and it's public, I'm going to select the, the area. In this case, is where we are having the, the conference. So uh, I'm just going to capture all the uh, Instagram photos sent uh, in this area when, where the, the Wolfram Technology Conference is happening. So uh, you know, it's like here. So I create the trigger. And then I specify the, the action. In this case, it's, uh, it's the, the Wolfram data drop channel. So I select to add an entry to the data, data bin. So here I have to deploy the, the, the ID of the data bin. So for this case, I'm going to go here and create a, a data bin. So once uh, I have this new data bin, I just have to take the, the short uh, ID, copy it, and paste it uh, in, the, in this field. Then you have to add uh, the ingredients, uh, the data that you want to add to this uh, specific data bin. For Instagram, you have different types of uh, ingredients that you can add. And one of those is uh, the caption, for example. So I'm just going to add the caption. But I'm going to specify the, the, the key. The, the, key is, the name of the key is going to be caption equals. And then I can add other ingredients just by adding an and. So, uh, for example, you can add the URL. So, I say URL is equal to the, the source URL that is going to be providing the, the image that we gonna, uh, we're going to be able to import to Mathematica later. So, I, I could be adding more uh, ingredients. In this case, I'm just going to have only the caption and the URL of the image. So, I ended up uh, with create action. 
and then I can check and select to receive no notifications of when this, um, uh, this recipe is running, then I'm going to receive a notification to my mobile device. So now I'm looking just for uh, some volunteers that I want to take a selfie and send it to Instagram. No, I'm just, just giving it. So here it is. I just, I just created a recipe. It's that simple. So the do recipes are even simpler. Also, you just uh, have to to deploy also the the ID of the data bin that you want to send the data. And for example, this case, I'm taking the latitude and longitude of my mobile device in this uh, field. So whenever I well, in this case, I, I must say that uh, I've been created. Uh, I created uh, the data bin using the function uh, built in. So I have this interpretation going on. So the geo is going to interpret as a location. So when I am sending the latitude and longitude numbers, they're going to be interpreted as a geo position. So I can show you an example. That I'm just going to tap the, from this, table, this tablet. So I'm going to save it to the bin. So now I have the location of this room. And for example, in this case, I was taking the last two values, and I live in Barcelona, so I just uh, had these two values. One was up to a hill, and this is uh, the other one was uh, at home. So I could like measure the, the distance, or like measure the, the alt altitude of this uh, hill in respect to my home, and several other things. But I'm going to try to run it and see if I'm detecting another location. Because I was uh, logging the location at my hotel, and now we're going to have the, the location of this, this room as well. But, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work. The, the internet connection is it's faulty for me. OK, let's, let's just keep that. So you can do the same thing for the, the do camera app. Could be saving the location and the photo as well. So for example, here I just uh, was taking some photos using this app. And then you can visualize them in the, in the map. The same for do note. You can save it whatever you want as uh, your values. It just was uh, like measuring the, the mood. But, uh, there are, so you can find your own uh, applications of it. It's open to you. Here is another example. I created uh, eight different recipes that, that were taking the Instagram channel. To, but they were, they, were, they were taking images from different locations, different zoos in the world. This is one of the largest ones. So I set up these uh, different um, recipes that were sending data to the same data bin. So I had this um, particular, this is the, the, the data bin. I had all the information available in there. So here is just a representation of the 30 images. Um, and then I used the image uh, identify to like, filter out only the images about the an animals. In this case, I was able to, to, to find what kind of uh, animals were photographed by, by, by the visitors. So. And it's quite impressive that, that they work quite well. Yeah. <laughs> and this was uh, only just one day, but. Uh, you can analyze the, the whole data. It, it has been running for several days, so. <laughs> That's uh, not a real one, but yeah. And then I can take, for example, also the captions of these uh, Instagram uh, photos. And I can tell the language that was uh, spoken by the visitors when, when they were sending these, these photos. You can also like create the, the 
the hashtag cloud, uh, the word cloud of the hashtags of these images, or analyze uh, the sentiment uh, of these posts. Most of them are positives. And using the Facebook topic uh, built-in uh, analyzer, you can see that most of these um, activity, most of these uh, posts are about the pets and animals, and family and friends. So that's need to see that these locations in the hairs uh, are representing these kind of topics. And you, you, we have the tools uh, to interpret that. Okay, the kid is another example. It's, uh, I've created uh, this recipe to collect uh, the text from Pinterest. So I use this to, to collect uh, Twitter programs that we are creating in this Pinterest uh, page. So here you have uh, all these uh, Twitter programs I can, has been selected from the ones that you are sending, or users are sending. So when I just click that I like one of those, I'm gonna save the text to the data bin. So I, I'm able to, to take the, te the, the code that I want from this uh, collection and then analyze it later. Here I'm just taking the last value of this data bin and it's giving me the, the, the expression and the code, so I can just explore it uh, in a notebook. So it's an easy way to go through it and, and have this service, the, the Pinterest, working for you. Finally, there is another example. that's the CloudBit from LittleBits. I have the, the sample here, so I can just uh, throw it. You, you can check it out. It's, it's just a LittleBits is a, a platform made, aimed for, for, for kids to explore uh, computation and, and electronics. So you have different models and different sensors. In this case, I'm just using a, a sound uh, trigger. So with this sound, I'm able to, to send data to data drop when it triggers using the, the this and that. Yeah. So I place it this, uh, this trigger next to the home telephone that I have at, at home. So uh, whenever it, it's ringing, it's gonna be saving an entry to, to this data bin. So here just uh, the data from August to, through October. You have uh, many other like uh, channels that you can use. For example, the location from Android and iOS, it's available there. So you can uh, set it up to trigger different things when you exit, uh, exit home, for example, or enter home. You can use the Fitbit, uh, Twitter, the UVI UV, uh, index also, it's available there. Newspapers, uh, there are a few of them, New York Times, the Times. Uh. And here is uh, the, the Netatmo weather station that I have at home. So uh, I created a recipe to, to lock um, values when, when the sound level rises or drops below a certain threshold. In this case, it's uh, 50 decibels. So when this happens, and I'm, I'm sending the data to data drop. So you can notice here that I'm, I created the, the data bin using this interpretation, that I want the noise to be interpreted as uh, decibels. So uh, all these values then are gonna be uh, with the corresponding units, the physical units that you have. Another point about the data drop is that uh, it allows you to analyze this data directly through Wolfram Alpha. So even if you don't know about uh, analyzing data in, in the Wolfram language or the, the Mathematica platform, then you can use uh, Wolfram Alpha to analyze it and have some insights about what is going on. So this is uh, the noises date is uh, it's on Thursday. So, but, yeah. Now I'm, I'm gonna show that you can also, this is, uh, was using the if this and that, but now I'm just gonna go to directly to the, the website of Netatmo, and there you can download from the cloud, the, the, their own cloud, the data that you have been collecting with your station, your weather station. And here I'm just uh, selecting these, um, all the, the values from, from September. So, uh, I just uh, imported uh, them as a CSV file. So uh, I used um, semantic import to import all the values of this, uh, this file. 
So it was using all these properties to interpret correctly the different physical units. And I ended up with uh, this uh, data set. And when, once I had this data set, uh, I just uh, well, I did different analysis. For example, here I was analyzing the, the average day I have. This is uh, the CO2 emissions, the particles per million. But uh, during night, it, it uh, rises up. And, and then during the day, it's, uh, it's quite low when I have uh, the windows open or whatever. It's going. But, and the noise is different here. The noise is low when, when we are sleeping. And then it rises up during the day. So um, the thing that I found uh, useful is to, to up, um, use data being upload. And in this case, uh, you can see that I have, I'm just uh, taking uh, smaller chunks of the data and sending that, uh, sending that to data drop because uh, there is a, a limit. So um, you have to be careful about uh, the, the size of your data set that you want to send to the data drop. The only thing important is that if you want the time stamps to be interpreted correctly, you have to, uh, to, set, uh, to, to set them uh, with the, the name time stamp in the sense that uh, the values the, the, the key name uh, it must be time stamp with a uh, capital D. Oh, oh is it? yeah, sorry, it's just a small detail. So, uh, yeah. So, so now next is just an example that Arnold did uh, with uh, Arduino Yun. Um, he built up his own uh, weather station. So uh, you're going to find this, uh, this uh, post available in the uh, community Wolfram, or the Wolfram blog was also featuring this uh, nice example. So when, when, when you send uh, the, this code to the, to, to the Arduino, you can see that here it's just uh, going to be adding the, the temperature using the, the IPI of the updated drop. You just uh, the, you have to change it with uh, your um, ID, the, your data bin ID, and then it's going to be saving that the temperature that's measuring the, the Arduino. And you can know, see the data with, uh, using different things. So that's an application using uh, Arduino. And then for the Raspberry Pi, I, I had this uh, small, like, um, infrared uh, motion sensor. So you can plug it up uh, to the GPO of the Raspberry Pi. I was collecting the, the, the movements so when, whenever it happens uh, at the, uh, the hole of my, my home. So I was collecting all these uh, movements in there, and at the end I was able to analyze several months of data. And I, I found that it was uh, easy to, to use data drop to monitorize this data for, through another location or whatever you want. You can even send images uh, using the, the Raspberry Pi camera model to data drop, so yeah, you can be adding these uh, photos there. And actually, I show it how to make a, like a time lapse. I was using this nice flower to show that when you, well, I wasn't like uh, watering it during like several days, and then it was like down. But then I just put uh, some water, and it uh, get lives again. Uh, it's, it's so we just uh, go through the, the way the way how to create the the data bin, and then I just run a scheduled task that was adding the images to, to this uh, data bin. So at the end, I ended up with uh, this animation, all the photos. Yeah, but uh, I might say that it it was uh, it, it was not harm uh, like. I, it was, yeah, I mean, I, I was not poisoning it, I was just watering after. No, it's in the sense that uh, it was like that, and then uh, with the water, it get alive again. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's the, the, the example, but you can do m much more with the uh, data drop and the Raspberry Pi. So finally, and then, I, I'm going to give you these, uh, all these resources that are available. So I just, um, so thank you very much for, for your attention.